Hi, everybody. Um, had a little technical technical difficulty there, but it looks like we are, uh, thanks to the rescue Mac here, we are um, back on schedule. Um, I'm here to talk about APIs. Uh, I know it's not standing room only because uh, people are probably a little bit more uh, afraid of the APIs than the loop, but hopefully I will reveal to you their warm fuzziness and be excited about them. Um, some of you are probably just here by default because it's kind of like the developer room and you figure you'll stay here all day and save your seat in case there's another, uh, unless there's another uh, you know, march on the room. Um, so why should you be here? Why, why would you possibly be interested in uh, the API and WordPress? Um, well, uh, the API, if you don't know, is basically a mechanism in every WordPress installation that you can enable that allows uh, stuff outside of the blog to access the blog automatically. So um, APIs are um, uh, useful for um, running other code elsewhere uh, that can do things to kind of like take advantage of your WordPress installation, maybe inside the WordPress blog, or maybe um, you know taking the data out of your WordPress blog and putting it on a website or something. So the WordPress API is used all over the place. Um, it's used by web applications. Uh, mobile applications like on the iPhone, and on desktop applications. And uh, now that you sort of know what an API is, who, who am I? Why should I be telling you about this? Um, my history is, a Mac, is as a Mac and iPhone developer, which uh, doesn't particularly uh, qualify me to talk about WordPress stuff, except that I'm also the developer of a desktop blog editor app. So, um, thank you. <laughs> um, and, uh, and in my work on Mars Edit, I've gotten to know the WordPress APIs and a lot of other APIs really well. And uh, because um, WordPress is so popular among my users, it's been in my best interest to get really involved with APIs uh, in WordPress. And uh, as a result of that, I've become an occasional contributor to the WordPress source code, uh, mostly in the API uh, department. Um, and in addition to being really important to all my users, the WordPress support, uh, it's also the blog of choice for my own uh, business blog, so um, I pretty much invested in WordPress, both as a uh, you know a provider of services and running my own uh, business blog. So, um, how many people sort of know what an API is? Is, that, is like the word API means something? Is it ring a bell, buzzword, or um, some of you I imagine probably don't know what an API is. As I said, you're just here saving your seat for the next session. But um, it stands for Application Program Interface. And that just means it's an interface for uh, accessing what an application has to offer. In this case, WordPress. You might not think about it this way, but it is an application. Uh, it's a web app. And um, the core thing about APIs, what they do best is that they hide complexity while giving you access to all of the exciting stuff that a uh, service has to offer. So um, the idea is that you should be able to um, kind of do all of the meaningful things with WordPress without having to get in there and know everything about all of the source code and write your own um, you know, components of WordPress. You should just be able to say, it would be really handy for me to list the last five comments that Mitchell left on my blog um, and have the API do that service for you. Um, the other big key uh, element of an API is it's stable across releases. So uh, it's sort of like a contract between WordPress and outside uh, you know, entities to say, if you sort of follow these rules, this contract of requests and responses, then if you write something today for WordPress 2.9, there's a good chance it's going to work in WordPress 5.0. Because, um, whereas by contrast, um, you could imagine doing something like, a, uh, let's, let's say that the, like a typical use for an API, a very simple thing you might want to do is to have like a, a piece of JavaScript code running on your web page that isn't a WordPress blog. And that JavaScript code may talk to the WordPress API to say, um, get like the, the most popular tags you've used. You might make a tag cloud or something. And um, you can do that today using the API. You could also do something really scary like you know, write code that knows how to connect directly to the WordPress database. Uh, again, Mitchell was talking about like, you know, learning SQL. Um, you could go in and 
with, a, with your deep knowledge of WordPress, go and scour the database and collect all the tags, but then um, the minute WordPress, the team, changes anything in the database structure or you know, assumptions about the format of the data, then your uh, solution would break. So the API is like kind of a, a deal made between any application and external entities that want to take advantage of it. Now you're probably thinking that sounds like themes and plugins, and the term API is used sometimes to talk about like a so-called plugin API. Um, I want to make sure that I distinguish what I'm talking about is a, a very formal, distinct thing apart from the plugin API. The plugin API is sort of like a an, inter an internal contract between um, you know things that you add into WordPress. Um, they're similar in that they also hide complexity. Um, and the key distinction, though, is that you can only use the plugin, quote unquote, API uh, if you're actually within WordPress. So if you want to write something that takes advantage of um, all of that stuff, it has to be, be dropped into your WordPress folder. So you've probably installed WordPress before, and um, you, know, you have like a, a plugins folder and a themes folder. The key distinction with things that take advantage of the API is that they live completely outside of the blog. Um, and in fact, you know, they, you would never install a WordPress plugin on your iPhone because um, that doesn't make any sense. But you could install an application that speaks to WordPress via the API, and that's sort of the whole point. Um, any authorized user can connect up to a blog that has the API enabled. And um, as of, I think, version 2.8, you have to explicitly enable the API. So if you start playing with this stuff and you want to connect up with services to your blog, you're going to have to go into the configuration uh, settings and uh, turn on access. So how about a little visual to break up the monochrome? Um, this is conceptually your entire WordPress application. Uh, it consists of, um, you know, things you're familiar with if you've done any hacking on WordPress, like the themes and plugins. The database is separate from WordPress, but it's sort of conceptually part of WordPress. It's all part of WordPress's kind of private, um, you know, playground. And then all the PHP code is what um, is responsible for not only talking to the database, writing and reading data from the database, but also presenting the web-based UI uh, for administration and for, uh, you know, simply viewing your blog. Um, but as it stands right here, nothing outside of the WordPress installation can do anything useful with WordPress unless it does something kind of sleazy like going in and, and, and you know, screwing with the database itself. So that's where the API comes in. The API is actually PHP code that is running within WordPress, but it's like a gateway into the PHP code from outside. It's a network interface so that um, anything can connect to the API, like the iPhone app, this, this Mars Edit icon is my application, Google Docs has inter uh, interactions that can talk to WordPress all through this API. So this is good because you don't really want all of these apps talking to your database or directly to your PHP code. You want to have this kind of security of knowing that it's only going through the contract uh, API. And uh, you know, the reason why I asked who knows what an API is, there's kind of like some rough familiarity because API is a popular word right now because the, the internet is so popular. And I think largely because Twitter is so popular, everybody knows, um, everybody knows that you can use Twitter from uh, different applications. You can, you can go uh, download iPhone apps, you can use desktop apps. There's, uh, um, you know, there's, uh, plugins for WordPress that automatically update your Twitter status when you post, that's actually using Twitter's API. And all of this kind of like expansion of Twitter's popularity, you know, there's, there's, there's applications for Twitter that people are passionate about as much as they are passionate about Twitter itself. And so it, the, the mere presence of Twitter's API has given Twitter like more uh, um, kind of authority and more like popularity than they even had to work for themselves just because they supplied this API to let other people do hard work to access um, their services. Um, also, like every other blog system out there has its own API. Um, so, you, you know, it's not unusual. WordPress's API is, 
it's, it's you know, expected, but none, nonetheless, a lot of people I find who aren't, um, you know, it, there's a, a small subset of people who seem to actually know it's there and it's available by default to everybody who wants to take advantage of it. Um, photo sites, Flickr, Picasa, Smugbunk, they all know they need to um, have an API so people can do things like have iPhoto or um, I'm sure there's some plugins for the PC that can automatically upload right from the app. Um, that stuff is, again, stuff that Flickr and Picasa didn't have to think about doing. They just said, here's an API. If you guys, if you geniuses out there want to do something, this is how you can do it. Um, even things like Google Maps, uh, Fogbugs, which is a bug tracking system, has an API. I mean, everything has an API. Delicious you can, uh, have, has an API for um, automatically, you know, fetching your bookmarks and searching through them. So basically, the message here is everything has an API. Start thinking about things in terms of APIs. How can you make a service, or whatever you're working on, you know, imagine most of you are using WordPress, but it's in the context of something bigger. And so um, maybe it would be cool for your service to offer like a, um, a specialized uh, uh, iPhone app or something like that. And that, the way you would approach that is through the API. And that's the big one we really care about. Uh, WordPress is API which I will now sort of talk a little bit more in detail about. What can you do with the WordPress API? Um, kind of like all of the high-level things you would expect are accessible through the API. You can get posts, you can add posts, you can edit just like a little tidbit of a post. You could go in um, with the API and have it automatically add tags to a post. Um, you could have, you could write a, um, a JavaScript that um, connected up with the API and um, that post is based on certain criteria and presented summaries of them on, say, uh, even another, like a Drupal system if you wanted to. You can have all these systems talk to each other through their APIs. Um, you can do things like add categories, you can alter the category structure, so um, this, a lot of stuff that you would do through the WP admin interface is accessible through the API. Uh, you can also upload files. This is a big deal because um, you know, you can do some really cute little things like uh, you can write like a, an iPhone app that um, when you take a picture with the camera on the iPhone, it automatically uploads to your blog and says like your geolocation or something. If you wanted to have like a specialized WordPress geo blog, photo blog, you could do all of this and never actually go to the WP admin interface. You could just have a situation where for you, what it meant to blog to this particular blog meant clicking the button to take a picture on your iPhone or Android or whatever. Uh, you can also do kind of more, you know, uh, administrative stuff like managing your comments, approving, rejecting comments. Uh, basically, the point is like you can do just about all the high-level things you want, and then if you run across something you can't do, the good news is the WordPress team is really receptive to suggestions. So if you're you know, looking at this and going, it would be perfect if I could just, you know, I don't know. Um, think of something, but that's your job, and, and then ask them to add it to the API. So I've been talking about the API as if there's only one. Um, in addition to the confusion that there is a sort of a plugins API, there are also two uh, outward-facing APIs in WordPress. Um, the main one, which has uh, been there for the longest time, is called the WordPress API now, and it has a, uh, it has a lineage that goes way back. So the way that blog systems, most blog systems have an API that's sort of uh, in common with each other. And it's because they've all sort of grown off of uh, this lineage that goes back. Uh, WordPress was based on movable types API, so essentially WordPress said, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Word, uh, movable types API is pretty good. We'll take that, but then we're going to add some stuff like being able to get pages, being able to manage comments, stuff like that. Um, movable type a few years earlier had done the exact same thing, and they took something called Meta Weblog, and they said, it's pretty good, but we're gonna add stuff for, you know, categories and et cetera. And that one, in turn, had been based on, way back in the old days, Blogger's original API, which is so crufty uh, that Blogger doesn't use it anymore, but um, <laughs> WordPress still supports it. It's actually, the way that this is done, it supports all of the APIs back that they have sort of built upon are still concurrently uh, supported. So you can connect with an application that was written, say, in 
I don't know, 2000 for only being able to talk to Blogger, no longer works with Blogger, but you can connect to a, a WordPress blog with it. Um, this API and all of these related APIs are based on a technology called XML RPC, which is just a, a format for structuring requests and responses in XML text format. So um, the way the API, API speaks to the world is it sits there listening for XML documents to come in that say things like, <coughs> I would like to see the last five posts, please. And then the, the blog through the API puts together all the last five posts into an XML format and sends it back. Um, XML RPC is a very common format um, for this, what's called uh, RPC, which is uh, remote procedure calls on, on the network. But it's kind of fallen out of favor because it's a little heavyweight. Uh, it doesn't take advantage of HTTP's sort of intrinsic performance abilities. So some of you may have also heard the buzzword called REST. Uh, and a REST API is one that takes advantage of the simplicity of the HTTP protocol and tries to sort of align how the, the, the interface works so that it's more optimal for HTTP. And uh, WordPress today, shipping and for years now, a couple, years, a couple years anyway, supports something called Atom Pub. And this is a REST based API that is based on Atom Pub's RFC. An RFC in the internet world is like as close to a standard as you really get, um, generally speaking. So this, was, this, this involved tons of really smart people hashing out on an email list for really years what is the best way to do not just a blog API, but a general purpose content management API. And it's kind of awesome, and WordPress recognizes that, and they implement support for it, but it's also just one of those things that hasn't really completely caught on. So it's there, and it's available to you, but um, more, most people use the WordPress API. So which one should you use? Um, the problem with choice, this is Paradox of Choice, you may have heard of this, uh, this book, but uh, the problem is, as soon as you have a choice, it's way more difficult to actually do anything because you, st you struggle with the question of which one to choose. Like if you're presented with one pair of blue jeans at the store, you will buy that pair of blue jeans. But if you're presented with five pair of blue jeans, then you'll probably like look at them and decide that none of them are good enough and, and leave and, and hope to find a better pair somewhere. Um, so I would encourage you to just adopt the attitude that if you can find a way to work with either of these APIs, then run with it. So in other words, if somebody has left your company and, and you know, had a halfway solution with one of the, with the Atom APIs, say, run with that. Just, you know, if it's working, then go with it because um, you don't want to you know, allow the, the force of just like uncertainty to restrict you from trying to get some good stuff done here. That said, um, it's worth noting that the WordPress API has its advantages. It's got a lot more features than the Atom Pub API, namely because it's, like I said, it supports like you know old Blogger clients, in, and uh, it's just got this history. And it, um, because of that, it's sort of like the go-to API when WordPress team is adding new functionality to an API. They are they are clearly more interested in keeping this API sort of um, as robust and feature-filled as possible. And it's uh, most, most compatible because it's been around so long that all of these clients around you know, in every field have written to this API, and um, they don't know a thing about Atom Pub yet. But as I said, the smart people came up with a lot of good ideas for Atom Pub, so um, there's some particular areas. Uh, media management, in particular, if like, that idea I had mentioned about like uploading a file. Um, Atom Pub uh, is a lot, it, it basically uses the same method to upload a file as you would use uploading a file on a web form or something. Um, you can actually send a binary like, image file. With the XML RPC, it's kind of ridiculous. You have to convert any binary file into a text format and then uh, stick that into an XML document and then send the whole picture wrapped up in XML as a text file to WordPress where it gets converted back into a binary file and dropped into your media folder. It works, but it is an example of why you can see how the Atom Pub people sat down and said, we got to do something better than this. And um, it's, so it's better than that. Uh, it also in incorporates some standard stuff from HTTP, which allows you to 
verify the up-to-dateness of the document. So um, XML RPC is kind of like the last one who gets their wins as far as um, updating a post. Like if you've got two collaborators working on you know, opposite sides of the coast and they're both editing a, a post, one person could send it and then uh, the other person, if they don't refresh first, could you know, download that copy, could send their edits and then completely obliterate the other one. And Adam Pub has uh, some standard HTTP stuff in there for saying, being able to ask the server, um, I've still got the latest version, right? Essentially, you can confirm that efficiently using Adam Pub. Okay, so um, uh, sort of like as technical as it's going to get, more or less, is, is done now. Uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about things that are actually using the, uh, the API to sort of inspire you to maybe use the API yourself. So one of the best examples, if you're thinking about getting into this stuff, is the WordPress iPhone app. Uh, largely because um, you know you guys are all already hooked up with WordPress and you like what they're doing. They happen to have an app that's extremely feature filled and all the source code is available as they are want to do. Uh, so you can download the source code for this. Um, you, you can install this iPhone app from the, if you have an iPhone uh, or, or a Touch from the App Store and you can do a lot of the things that I've been talking about from your iPhone instead of having to go through um, you know, the, there's an iPhone interface for the web page on, on WordPress, but um, it's kind of like slower and not as, um, you know, it's, it's kind of just like you, you expect a more of a native uh, feel of an iPhone app, and that's what the WordPress iPhone app gives you. Uh, you, you if you look at the code, you're going to have to um, stomach that it's in Objective-C, which is my favorite language, but most of you probably will be horrified. And, um, but, uh, the good thing is, since it's so robust, you can, if you're, if you're working with the API, you're just like, how the hell does Get Recent Posts work? You can go look at this source code, and I'm sure that you can, you know, wipe the blood off your eyes and, and uh, figure out that, uh, what, what, what the nuance of using the API is, even though it's written in Objective-C for the iPhone. Um, yeah, it uses a large subset of the API, so that's good. And I like it because it's a really great example of WordPress sort of seizing on its own API. And um, in my experience, the best APIs come from companies that actually use their own API. Um, it's a shame some companies sort of um, publish an API as like a, as like a, as, as if they're being forced to do it, you know. And, and um, obviously, I pointed out Twitter. Like, they they're no dummies. They know that like that you publish an API because not because you're being forced to do it, but because you want everybody to adopt your thing and make you the most popular in the world. And um, so by WordPress using their own API for this iPhone app, I think it's a really good sign for others who want to use the API, because you know that it's going to be good enough for, for the WordPress team itself, as far as their ambitions for the iPhone app, at least. Um, another example is Google. If, if you use Google Docs, you may not have noticed this, but you can, um, you can choose to publish your documents to the web like, outside of Google Docs. And um, of course, it supports publishing to a blogger blog, because Google owns Blogger, but um, to their credit, it supports a variety of other systems, uh, including, this is one of the ironies, is that it can host to systems that implement the old crufty Blogger API, but um, you can't use that to, of course, post to Blogger. Um, but it knows about WordPress.com in particular, and it's... Um, also lets you set up for a self-installed WordPress installation. And um, just kind of a good example that, like, you know, even people like Google are interested in publishing to WordPress blogs. Um, and that's the stuff I just talked about. Oh, the, uh, the message, I think, from this is, if you are in the business of publishing anything to the web on behalf of users, why not also let them publish it to their WordPress blog at the same time? Um, ideally, why not let them publish it to any of their blogs, you know, to Flickr, to everything. But, since we're all in this room for WordPress, why not let them publish to WordPress? And, since we're all in this room at Microsoft, why don't we talk about the fact that even Microsoft Word lets you publish to WordPress. Um, and Microsoft Word is everywhere, um, but th they are in the same boat. They have their own blog system, like Blogger does, Windows Live Spaces. Nobody knows about it because nobody uses it, I think. But Microsoft Word understands this, and so they, look, they let you publish to WordPress. Um, 
They also have a desktop client, like my client, MarsEdit. Windows Live Writer is a very popular desktop application, and it's popular because it lets you publish to a variety of services, including WordPress. This will be very, this will be very quick, because my computer was uh, not connecting to the display, so um, I won't put you through this live demo, but uh, maybe next time. Um, if you do happen to have a Mac, then this is the uh, application I was going to show you. It's, um, it will let you uh, interactively type requests to an XML RPC server of any kind, including WordPress's built-in uh, uh, API. So um, if, you, if you enable support on your WordPress blog for the <coughs> API and go to whatever your blog is slash xmlrpc.php, then you will be talking for better or for worse, right to directly to your WordPress API, and this application can make that a little bit more enjoyable if you're just trying to figure stuff out. So, maybe I've encouraged you to uh, try to do something with APIs, and if I have, here are some resources for you. Um, these are bitly short, shortened URLs, so you just have to remember the short part. WP API doc at bitly is um, the, the section of the codex that talks about all of WordPress's API support. So it sort of goes into detail about the stuff that WordPress has added, stuff that came from movable type, et cetera. And there's a special little mailing list just for uh, API stuff. And it's very low volume because there's not very many of us talking about this stuff. But um, WP API list will get you there. And it's, it's, it's separate from the, the main development uh, list even. And we just talk about. Um, stuff related to the API, and uh, they give a heads up, for instance, when a new version has new API stuff. And the person usually doing the heads up is Joseph Scott, who is an automatic developer um, who is responsible for the API. And he has a blog, josephscott.org, which you might want to follow even if you're not interested in the API. So that about wraps it up. And check me out on Daniel Punkass at Twitter, um, or email me. Uh, that's red-sweater.com. Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions? Hi. Um, I don't know. It could be. I will do that if if, uh, if if it is made available to me. I don't know what that is, so. Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. He has a copy now. So. <laughs> Um, anybody else? Oh. Using the API or either of the APIs, can you connect, when you connect to your WordPress, WordPress uh, install, can you talk to custom database tables? Um, custom fields in particular you can talk to, but you can't, you can't talk to an arbitrary database table, but custom fields as they are defined by WordPress, um, they are exposed through the API. Okay. Um, in order to use it, you have to authenticate, right? That's right. Um, I, I, I believe that there is a plugin for OAuth. Yeah, and it was actually there was it was within the past year or so there was pretty major changes to uh, WordPress to support the plugin. So they had to change some things to make the authentication system more generic. And that's a good idea because actually when you authenticate with the the, the default authentication is just a plain text uh, authentication. So OAuth, it's the letter O and then auth like authenticate. And it's a standard. Um, it's if you, it's how you authenticate with Twitter now. You don't get right. The password right. And it's pioneered by uh, Flickr. If you've ever authorized an app to use Flickr, it kind of makes you go to the web page first and then you go back. Done. All right. Well, thanks a lot, everybody.